All right, so hear me out. We've all been there when a game gets an insane amount of praise, like people gassing it up so f hard to the point you absolutely have to give it a try and when you do you just don't end up vibing with it you might understand what the game is and understand the hype but maybe it's just not for you and yeah that was me with Hollow Knight. And whoa, 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 slow down, my fellow keyboard warriors. When I went to go play Hollow Knight, I thought it was amazing, especially artistically, but I just couldn't get into it because at that point, I've never really played a Metroidvania style game before, besides like Metroid Prime. I respected what the game was, but it just wasn't for me. They can only play it for like an hour or two. Well, fast forward to now, I just beat the game, got three out of four endings, currently planning on tackling the Pantheon and absolutely loving it this game is perfect and i hate throwing that word around but man this game is a special experience and i'm pissed at myself for writing it off so quickly when i originally played it so today we're gonna be talking about this absolute banger of a game and why i've finally seen the light all right to be honest i don't even know where to start hollow knight is the first game in a really long time that has left me speechless all throughout my experience and even with every ending and credit roll i was close to shedding a tear like the little baby i am every single pixel every single enemy or npc has intentionality and serves a purpose whether it's to help you learn a mechanic explore more of the lore or even just a reminder that this game is beautiful but it's also dark and depressing too you can describe hollow knight with a lot of words like i just did but sometimes when a piece of media has many conflicting aesthetics or vibes it can become confusing but what hollow knight does so well is it's able to blend all those feelings when you play the game perfectly the game is stunning artistically a few of the zones are cute and more lighthearted and fun while others are dark and unsettling with sounds of bugs crawling everywhere. The soundtrack elevates all of this too where every song is there to make you feel something whether it's tension when you're fighting a boss or a song that's more upbeat and fun that adds some coziness to the less intimidating zones. And then of course the music to help you fully develop that sad lonely feeling that the game does such an amazing job at portraying. All right now that my love letter's over let's actually dive into this game because there's so much more I really want to say. I know I just got done glazing the game tone and atmosphere but it really is something special the art style alone is worth praising the game over but when you add all the other world building elements the game really does become a straight masterpiece let's start with the game's story it's pretty easy to get an idea to what's actually going on it's got similar elements to souls games where the story isn't told straight to your face which obviously i love but it's not overly complex and if you talk to the game's npcs it'll be very easy to understand what's going on and what your purpose is and what the hell happened to hollow nest some of my favorite moments moments in the game or talking to all the NPCs you find. Some of them are super cute and adorable, some are heroic and charming, and others are a straight asshole. Like motherfucker, I just saved your life! I really enjoyed all the NPCs though. I'm not sure if it's because of their little bug language or what, but man, they really added to the game's immersion and got me to actually care about them. Like bro, Myla and Crystal Peak genuinely made me sad cutting her down later in the game. But anyway, not only does the game do everything right with its NPCs, but the map and all the zones too. Hollow Knight's map as a whole is just a straight chef's kiss. Every zone feels so vastly different from one another, but they somehow all make sense and flow well into each other. The entire map is connected, so every zone leads to others, and I cannot emphasize enough how well the exploration actually flows. For example, when you start diving down, the first few zones are pretty cute and relaxing to explore. Nothing too crazy. But by the time we get down to the deep nest, you're sweating your ass off, ready to get out of this creepy zone because you just can't stand hearing the scuttling or whatever the f is down here anymore. Some of the zones are pretty hidden too, like the hive or the queen's garden, which took me forever to find for some reason. All I can really say is the map is perfect. Everything from the game's cozy town hub of Dirt Myth all the way to the White Palace where I spent probably three hours platforming because I fucking suck at platforming. Good god, my experience in the White Palace was fucking terrible. You couldn't pay me to do the Path of Pain either. Even though it was fucking miserable for me, I loved it. Just because I suck and hate platforming doesn't mean this zone was bad. I just had to get good and get over myself. My favorite games are usually the ones that reward exploration, and no game does it quite like Hollow Knight. Every part of the map serves some sort of purpose, whether it's to give you a sick charm or mass fragments to increase your health. You're always being rewarded for exploring, and I never felt like I was wasting my time. I also thought the enemy design was really well done. Every enemy felt like it really belonged in the zones that they were in, and this really added an additional layer to the overall 
overall world and map. But all right, let's finally talk about combat because man, I was not expecting the amount of depth here. So when I first played Hollow Knight a while ago, I barely got any of the game's abilities, like maybe just the dash. So I was very clearly not engaging with the game well enough. I thought the combat was just jumping and whacking shit, but that's actually not the case at all. The game is constantly giving you new abilities and charms to improve whatever play style you enjoy the most. The gameplay always felt like it was evolving and it evolves at a really good pace too. It was never overwhelming getting something new to use. I'm a very melee focused person, but I was really enjoying utilizing spells during certain boss fights. Like Vengeful Spirit saved my ass during the Watcher Knight boss fight. I would always find myself in an iffy spot where the bosses would be off screen, so I'd send my Vengeful Spirit and pray that I'd get some free damage in. But even by the end of the game, Abyssal Shriek saved my ass in the Radiance boss fight. I was really surprised to see the amount of spells and abilities that you're able to utilize throughout the game. And it was even better that I was still able to smack my way through the game, but the spells did help immensely. And this is where the charms come in and allow for a ton of creativity. You want to make your melee hits reach farther? Easy. Want your spells to do more damage? Easy. Want to get mana every time you get hit? Easy. There are so many charms and combinations of those charms for you to use, and I always found myself switching them out if I was stuck on a boss fight. The game plays the perfect amount of simplicity with enough going on that doesn't feel overly complex to the point where you aren't using half of your spells or abilities. You're always equipped with multiple ways to tackle each and every boss. And that's a perfect segue to talk about what really matters here the bosses. This game has a ton of bosses for you to fight, some with only a few mechanics and others where there is always something you gotta dodge and keep track of, or even multiple like the Radiance. I tried to fight every boss in the game, but uh, I didn't get close. I fought most of the base game bosses, but I still got every Pantheon to beat and a bunch of others I have no idea how to get to. I know that there are some really fucking hard ones like Nightmare King Grim and even the harder version of the Radiance boss fight. I can't really talk about those since I haven't gotten to them yet, obviously. But like I said, I did try and beat most of the base game bosses. And I can't think of one boss I didn't really like. Some of them gave me a really hard time, like the Watcher Knights. This boss fight slapped me around so f***ing hard. I think my brain really had to adjust to keeping track of two enemies at once, which was really hard for me. It took me a long time, and that was after using the Chandelier to take one of them out permanently. But after upgrading my nail a few times, I was in a better spot and was finally able to make it. The other boss that really slapped my ass was the Traitor Lord. I really loved this boss fight, though. The Shade Cloak upgrade made this fight really fun. Every single one of its moves could be dodged with it, and I really had to focus on my timing. This fight specifically really felt like a dance, and I loved it. And as I said, this game has multiple endings. It has four in total. To get the first two, you just gotta beat the Hollow Knight, which I guess is technically the final boss. The two endings are definitely worth getting, mostly because they don't take that much effort besides the second ending needing the Void Heart, and you're gonna need the Void Heart for the third ending anyways. But the third ending involves you beating the actual final boss, the Raid and this boss was really, really satisfying. And in my opinion, the perfect end of the game. The Hollow Knight is a great boss, don't get me wrong, and you're gonna have to fight him every time to get access to the Radiance. But the Radiance as the final boss is a much more satisfying conclusion, not only because it's way harder than anything you fought up until this point, but it's just a lot more climactic, and it gives you what I feel like is the good ending. But the Radiance was definitely the boss I struggled with the most. But once I got it in my head that dodging took first priority and damage was second, I was finally finally able to persevere, and man did it feel good. This ending was the one that hit the hardest for me too, and it felt really impactful. And it felt like such a beautiful way to wrap things up. There is a fourth ending, which involves finding all the bosses that I missed and killing the absolute radiance, which uh, really intimidates me. I plan on trying to tackle the Pantheon to get the last ending, but we'll see if I'm actually good enough. I have heard it's really, really rewarding though, so I'm gonna definitely try. All in all, what an experience this game was. I was really excited to do this video to help formulate my feelings and thoughts on the game, but I'm still pretty speechless. Hollow Knight is special, and Team Cherry 100% deserves the amount of praise they've gotten for this game. And I understand why people are dying for the game's sequel that feels like will never come. Hollow Knight is filled with so much passion and intentionality, and it's rare for a game to make me feel so much emotion all the way through. Hollow Knight is absolutely getting added to my top favorite games, and I know I will revisit this game many times in the future. Hopefully I can beat the rest of the game's bosses, but I guess there's no rush. Who knows? when Silk Song will release. But man, what an experience. Anyways, I think it's a great place to call the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'm so happy I gave Hollow Knight a real chance this time. I feel like there's so many Metroidvania games I need to try now. But anyway, next video will be on Armored Core 6. So if that interests you, feel free to subscribe. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video and yeah, peace.